Hey, good morning, sports fans. We'll be diamond in our Las Vegas handicapping studios, and we are live with Better Center. And we are coming to you with two, not one, but two fantastic handicappers. And uh, going to get you plenty of winners here today. Mr. Tony Gulledge is joining us, our trusted weekend warrior, the Red Rifle. Good morning, Red Rifle. Hey, good morning, Lou. Glad to be here. Uh, just mention, take 10 seconds to say Clemson kicked ass as the uh, Bucky Buster yesterday. Got one up at the site for today, 15 and 6, 71% coming into the day with the Bucky Buster. 71% winners. Tony G, crushing it at bettercenter.com. You're going to want to go there today to get his place. But before you do, we got some free action for you. But let me introduce our second trusted handicapper. And the man has come out blazing. He's gotten us some winners. He got you get you pulled called the Miami Dolphin shutout a couple weeks ago. Last week crushes another one. What'd you have that last week, Chumley? Welcome back, Chumley. Hey, welcome back. Um not really sure what my bet. I think my best bet was uh under in uh one of the games, but then I uh my top side play was Miami, which we got a little lucky on. But I think in the last two Sundays on the show, I'm like 10 and 4 overall. And yesterday on the Better Center uh, Facebook page, I was 2 and 1. I gave out Northwestern, Florida, and then I got killed with the Denver Bills game. But overall, another good day, a couple good weekends. So. All right. Well, good job, Chumley. And uh, we'll uh, start popping some of your free plays up there at bettercenter.com. So make sure you to bookmark. BetterCenter.com. Make sure to subscribe on BetterCenter.com at Facebook or subscribe on YouTube at Louis Diamond. And you will get these plays as they are happening. So, uh, now that being said, let's just get right down to our first game of the week. And that is the Colts. And they are at home as a seven point favorite. Playing the uh, Texans and a little bit of rematch from an angle that we had two weeks ago where the Texans were supposed to cover that game but did not. But we had a big angle on it, so uh, had a lot of action on that. But now we got the rematch. This time it's at Indianapolis. And uh, let's just get the guy's thoughts. Tony, I'll start with you. Houston at Indianapolis. Yeah, well, I was actually bucked that trend. I, I felt bad, but I didn't feel as bad when it actually won. The Colts were able, <laughs> I, as I recall, it went into the half 24 20. The only score of the second half was a safety for a 26 20 final. Colts won, covered the three points. Coming back home now, going over a touchdown. I'm going to be the absolute contrarian here. I got Houston plus seven and a half. Maybe the hook's still out there. Not sure. Don't buy it if it's not there. But uh, this is definitely a, what I would consider a softer spot here for the Colts in terms of making a number. A team that has always been more content to play it close to the vest, simply get the win, not even consider covering. And Houston is definitely the kind of team that will get the garbage cosmetic touchdown as easily as they give it up in some of these games not to cover. So expect a situation where Houston – are uh, looking to pass some stats late, even if they're behind here. I think your best play to make on this game is to take the Texans and the points against the Colts. All right, looking at them points, I'm going to have to lean with you as well. I don't want to bet on the Texans. I won't bet on the Texans, but I feel the lean will be the Texans. You're getting seven and a half, eight points in the matchup. But, Chumley, how are you seeing the game playing out? Well, if you go by the, the past year, I can't back Houston. Unfortunately, they they made Trubisky look like a MVP last week, and their defense is under underwhelmed. Their offense just doesn't have any weapons. Um, I would probably lean the Colts, actually. I I just feel like they have, since Houston's number two there, they've covered five or six in a row against them. I would lean the, the Colts in this game myself, personally. Okay, we got a lean on the Colts, a lean on the Texans, and Tony's a little bit heavier with a Texan opinion on that game, but it doesn't look like any of us are really pulling the trigger too much. Tony's looking for that backdoor touchdown. Hopefully, that backdoor will be a jar. All right, next game on our schedule. In fact, let's just stop the world right now because in my ear, 
I hear the man on the street, the man on the street, the man that's going to give us information on a complete, completely useless game today. So you're going to have to really work hard to, in, to keep us interested, to keep your face on the camera here, Mr. Cusomano, because you got a shitty game with the 49ers at the Cowboys. It's absolutely meaningless. Make some meaning about this, Mr. Cusomano. <laughs> Thank you, better Senator. That's what you think, Louie Bag of Diamonds and Company. You think this is a meaningless game? Well, let me tell you something, folks. I'm back at AT&T Stadium. Of course, I was here yesterday for the Big 12 championship game, and we got our money's worth there, Tony Gulich. Uh, well, that was a close one there as Oklahoma pulled one up. But here we are now. We've got the uh, San Francisco 49ers, a team without a home, at the Dallas Cowboys. And why do I say a team without a home? The 49ers have not had a home game, a real home game, since November the 5th. Their last two home games, quote-unquote, have been in Arizona. They're one and five in their last six games. You've got the Cowboys coming into this game. They have not won at home in three tries. Uh, all the money's on San Francisco, as, I, as, as I've been studying, and as we look to where the money goes here in this game that we play. So everybody's on the 49ers today at minus three and a half on the road, a road favorite. So everyone's on the 49ers with Nick Mullins, who's getting a sixth straight start with Garoppolo out. By the way, Jimmy Garoppolo, he may be back next week if he's only 110%. And that's what uh, Coach Shanahan says. If he's not 110%, he's not playing next week with the bad ankle. And I don't blame him. Why risk it? Let him come back strong for next year. So, again, back to the numbers, though. Minus three and a half San Francisco, over and under 45. Uh, I don't know uh, what you guys think here, but I see that the NFC least, and that's what the vision is, is the Cowboys are the NFC least. Okay, I see the Cowboys, they might go 3-0 here in the last three weeks of the season and finish at 7-9 and nine and win the division. And you say this is a meaningless game. I mean, look at Washington today. Washington has to take on Seattle. The Eagles are in Arizona, and we've got a Daniel Jones-less uh, Giants tonight in Cleveland. Uh, something could happen here. Cowboys have Philly next week, and they got the Giants uh, at the end of the season for their final game. We could see a 7-9 and nine Cowboy team, and they take the division, provided uh, Washington doesn't win one more. So anything is possible in the uh, scenarios here. Uh, we've got a mix here of Cowboys and – I don't know, how's the uh, divide here? We've got Cowboys and 49ers fans here. Uh, uh, everybody, they're just tailgating, having a good time. Here. I'm going to get me some salsa and some hot dogs, but – the most interesting play of the day, folks, from the man on the street is Cowboys plus three and a half. But I take them on the money line. I see the Cowboys winning today and making the 49ers go to five and ten. What do you think of that, everybody? I'm sorry, five and nine. They're five and eight right now. So what do you what do you think of that, Tony Gallich and uh, our new eye candy of the crew, uh, Chumley? What do you think, Chumley? What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Go ahead. Yeah, that was Chumley that was going to comment, but hey, it sounds like it's a good party going on there. Uh, hopefully, uh, it, even if the football stinks, the atmosphere looks like they're having a good time. So at the end of the day, that's all that's really important. And that game, I actually end up making a hard pass on that. Almost want to say I agree kind of with Kusumano, lean toward the Cowboys, but in retrospect, that's probably best I just left that game alone. Uh, enjoy your afternoon out there in uh, AT&T Stadium there, Kusumano. All right. Chumley, what are your thoughts on that game? No, I agree with Tony um, Gullage. Uh, but, Tony, have a good time at the game. Um, they're just – I don't like that game one bit. I Dallas has maybe covered two spreads, and San Francisco, they're way too inconsistent. It, it could go either way. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend betting that game myself. But good luck to Tony on the Cowboys money line. I hope, he, I hope that hits for him. Yeah, well, at least he's probably going to have a little fun today. Tailgaters in uh, game, week 15 of COVID in a fairly meaningless game. Yes, America, you guys are double sharp. All right, so uh, on that game, uh, one thing you want to take note of, the Niners are 9-23-1 as a favorite. But boy, does the uh, script flip. When they go on the road, 16 and 7, the last 23 games as a road favorite for them 49ers. I will have nothing to do with this game either. Just wanted to let Mr. Cusimano have a little fun.
tailgating today. All right, so now let us have a little fun getting into our next game of the day, and that is going to be the Lions and the Titans. Oh, my. Will Derrick Henry just <laughs> run right through this terrible rushing defense? What are your thoughts, Eric? Let's start with Shumley. Yeah, this is a game where you got the Lions who stop nobody. Uh, they've I think like seven their last nine have went over. Most of the Titans games have went over too. And I uh I think Henry and the boys are gonna have a big day. I would definitely I definitely like the over and I would lean Tennessee pretty heavy. I might make a small play on Tennessee in the over. All right, little Titans and the over from Mr. Chumley. Tony, how are you seeing the game being played? Yeah, I, I definitely think Derrick Henry can have a good game, but this could be a case where he rush, rushes for 200 yards and Tennessee scores 20 points. Uh, I'm really skeptical laying this kind of point, especially Detroit. I know was a garbage can special. They will certainly sweep in late like they did for us uh, against Green Bay. Just sweep in real late, sneak in the back door, sit down at the table and cash a ticket. Uh, this is kind of situation. The over Chumley's mentioning – I could see that because I, I could I see a situation where perhaps Detroit is getting in play against a pre, more of a prevent defense in the fourth quarter. The key to that, obviously, is what kind of lead Tennessee has. If this game is anywhere close competitively, as in you know the uh, score is close, Tennessee could be looking to milk the clock with Henry, and that's always an issue when you're playing over. A good running game can really hurt an over the total bet. But uh, for me, this game was a pass, but I will lean with Chumley on the over a little bit here. All right. Uh, uh, here's something interesting. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Alan DeRozier's put something up today that spoke my in piqued my interest, as you say, over NFL games in the last five weeks have gone under. At 62.7%. So the meaning has come to play. So, and after, as I kind of look back, I, I, I really see that uh, the high scoring, um, I guess it can very easily be attributed not to COVID, but to no preseason. There you go. No preseason. I think we mentioned it. If we go back and look at the very first clips of this show, I think one of the first shows up. I mentioned it. Someone mentioned it. I think at some point I even mentioned that uh, yeah, the lack of the lack of preparation was going to hurt the defenses more than anything. And I think that showed up early. Now the defenses really? are catching up, and you're starting to see some lower scoring games. Yeah. So the the numbers. Uh, so maybe they're adjusted this week. I don't know. Uh, but uh, that's something that you need to uh, take into consideration before you take the rubber band up the bank row and hit the window. So. All right, so let's uh, hit to our next game on the schedule, and that is going to be the Bucks and the Falcons. And um, you know, are the Bucks uh, going to really put this to? I mean, technically, they need the game. They went from one and a half all the way to six and a half and seven. The money's all over them. I think you're a little behind on the line. Obviously, a lot behind on the line. But I still believe the Bucks in a teaser. They got to come up with the win. And uh, Chumley, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that the one thing that scares me is that the public is very, very Tampa Bay heavy today. But I don't normally do this, but I kind of agree. The Falcons are all banged up. I think Allen's out, uh, Jones is out, and Tampa Bay is relatively have, um, healthy and uh, their defense is legit. I. Personally, I'm going to back Tampa Bay today. I'm going to go with a minus stick against, against my better judgment, maybe. But I, I really like them today, and I'm just going to stick with it. All right. I believe Rojo's out of with the uh, – uh, he's going to play some reserve with the COVID-19. So, uh, so no, no Rojo there for Mr. Brady to establish his running game. A lot of pressure going to be put on Mr. Fournette, who I just dumped on my uh, um, from my bench to off the team. Probably might be the week to have them. But uh, what are your thoughts, Tony? Yeah, I'm going to actually play Atlanta here. Perfect spot for me to take them in a divisional game at home against Tampa Bay. Uh, you, I'm looking at uh, basically an Atlanta team that while they're still not winning games, they did get a win at home against the Vegas, courtesy of five Vegas turnovers. In spite of that, 
on the field product. Atlanta's definitely getting better. Always going to play a tough, uh, tough game at home. Uh, two of these most recent losses, you look, they beat Carolina, they beat Denver, but in three of the last four games, they've lost in New Orleans twice. So that kind of shows you the schedule. And they just uh, played pretty well in a loss at uh, the Chargers last week. Low scoring, tough game. So that's what you're starting to get with Atlanta. There's while their offense isn't firing all cylinders, the defense has improved. They're hanging in these games. Tampa Bay, like you mentioned it, they need to win. But, you know, like I said, their eye is going to be on the prize of winning. This covering – in these divisional games between Tampa Bay and Atlanta, I just think there's a history of uh, – these games can be tight, usually come down to the end. Matt Ryan at home in a divisional game, I am not going to bet against him, and I usually look for a reason to bet on him. And today I will take Atlanta. All right. Uh, I believe I'm uh, losing some uh, feed right now. So uh, hopefully you still can hear me. So uh, it sounds like you're liking Atlanta there. And uh, and uh, Chumley likes a little Tampa. So we're, we have some conflicting opinions on that one. Next game on the schedule will feature the changing of the guard, potentially. Well, the changing of guard happened yesterday as the Bills win the AFC East. But Miami has a chance to mathematically knock the Patriots out of the playoffs here today. Miami has uh, done very well against the Patriots during the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick era. And Miami has done extremely well at home versus the Patriots. And uh, I just, uh, this is uh, the week that uh, the Patriots are put to rest. Go ahead, Tony. I'm not going to take a ton of time with this one. Miami's playing too well at home. New England having issues offensively. Uh, man, if New England hangs in this game, it's going to be like special teams or some kind of quirky defensive play. It just seems it doesn't seem like their offense is going to be able to put uh, Miami in, the, you know, especially with the way Miami's defense is playing. So yeah, this is on. This is not my bookie buster selection, but this is in my upper upper tier of plays for NFL Week 15. I do like Miami and suggest. If you're playing a few games this week to get a little bit of money on Miami, as uh, I guess we'll say, walk New England to the uh, euthanasia room. And I guess this would be the end of the Patriots and Cam Newton's one-year experiment will be over. I like the Dolphins today, Luke. All right. Uh, Chumley, you've been on the Miami tra the Miami train for since you've been here? You staying on the yep. train today? Oh. I might leave it a little bit, but – I do have a solid play for this. Um, Belichick is going to – he'll get the job done to keep 2-0 in check somewhat. And Cam Newton has been terrible uh, passing all year, and they're not going to score against Miami. This is going to be my total of the week. Take this game under the total. It's going to be like 17-10 final. I will tend to agree with you on that. Uh, you know, Belichick versus rookie quarterbacks. They struggle, so – uh, you gotta give a lot of respect to that, and um, so I, I, I'm a, I'm a little weary on the Dolphins here today. Tight line, so I think it's gonna be a good game. So uh, teaser, I think so. Either way, yeah, I probably think so. So and probably the under as well. So uh, that uh, that is my opinion there. What do we got for our next game, gentlemen? Our next game on the schedule will feature the Seahawks. And they will be at uh, the Redskins. Uh, Seahawks lane six and a half, total 43. Redskins defense, are they up for the Russell Wilson bake-off? Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I just now realized a uh, fourth consecutive win for the uh, football team as they host Seattle. And I'm going to throw it out there, not giving Gene any heads up, but this is going to be my bookie buster play for the NFL Week 15 uh, looking to push that 15-6 and six record ahead with this. A lot of interesting matchups. Something's got to give. Seattle needs the game to hang in the NFC West. You got, like I say, the football team right now in, in charge of their destiny in the NFC NFC least with the 6-7. and seven. But the four straight wins on paper does look good for the Redskins. So before you put your money on this play, uh, go to bettercenter.com and check out the bookie buster. I, I think you'll be happy. 71% since we begin doing them on the show. It's over a month now. We're into the cleanly into the second month of doing this. And 71% uh, has been the result of the product. Uh, my call on this game is up at bettercenter.com now. 
Thanks, everybody. All right, Tony Gulledge. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to have to cheat a little bit and go into that game. I have a little opinion on the game. Nothing strong, but I personally feel, you know, the Redskins are just playing well enough to keep the game close enough. It's an opinion. It's just a lean. I really would struggle to be betting on that. The line went from three all the way up to seven right now. Chumley, does that mean something to you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm going to stay away from the side again. Um, the last five uh, games for the Redskins have stayed under. Most of, the, I think, five or six in a row of Seattle have stayed under. I'm just, I'm going to stay with that uh, stat today. I'm going to. It's not going to be like official play, but I'll, I'll lean with the uh, the under today, and I'm going to stay away from the side. I could see it going either way. Okay. All right. If if I had to, I would probably bank on that Washington defense to probably keep it close enough and probably keep it under. Uh, but uh, I'm going to follow Tony's lead on this, and so I will cheat. I did not look and see what he's playing, but I'm going to look, and uh, maybe I'll uh, jump on his bandwagon as well. He's been on fire with them bookie busters, guys. Nothing to this, not, 71%. So get out to bettercenter.com. Tony's got it offered to you. And uh, it's an interesting game. I'm looking forward to seeing it. So um, I hope Tony doesn't mind that I snag it for free. But uh, all right, guys. I'll so uh, I <laughs> say that again. He'll give it to me too. <laughs> It's right. the executive pri it's the executive privilege, yeah. guys. You'll, you'll you know who I'm on. You'll know who I'm on before the they kick off. Privilege. All right. So uh, our next game on the schedule will feature the Bears and the Vikings, and uh, the Vikings minus two and a half, and the total is at forty-seven. Line opened up six and a half on the Vikings. A lot of love for them Bears. Why is that line moving? Who's got an idea, Tony? Why do you got a line move? Why? Everything, man. This is just a game. I'm gonna ultimately tell you this is a game I avoided and did not put money on. But what you get here is the classic NFL handicapping setup for a stinker, and the people appear to be walking uh, walking the plank here on the Bears. You had the Bears look great last week. The talk of Trubisky, how ooh, ooh, wow, you know, I, I, talk radio for the first day or two. I saw this game. They were talking about it. Well, I guess we're back to me. I think we might have lost. Can you still hear me? There you okay. go. Uh, we lost. Got... Go okay, and then the uh, Vikings, of course. Hey, this is a perfect setup to take the Vikings, but I'm going to be honest. I didn't have the balls to do it, so uh, I'm going to pass. But certainly, be careful betting the Bears today. It looks like a sucker bet to me. What do you think, Chum Lane? Sucker bet? No sucker bet? I don't know how the Bears are going to hang here today. I'm uh, uh, I'm thinking way too big of a win. Flat this week. Minnesota uh, has kind of had their uh, – no, actually, uh, Bears have had their way. And the home team is 7-3, and three, though. So Minnesota's had their way at home. Uh, the dog, 5-2, and two, though. So what are your thoughts, John? Yeah, this is just another game where, yeah, Trubisky's not – He's a more of a backup NFL quarterback. I would never, they, I would never back the Bears on the road in, in a division game against Minnesota. Uh, there was some love going on in the under. I actually, I think this game's going to sneak over the total. That's just a, just a small lean. But Cousins too, he's way too inconsistent. He'll probably have some turnovers late. It, it could go either way. But I, I think the, it's going to sneak over the total today. Okay. All right. So uh, now uh, I got to believe Vikings, they're feeling like they are still in the playoffs. And I just have a feeling they're going to take good care of business here today. And too much uh, uh, too much hype from last week with the Bears and Trubisky. I, I think it's the zigzag scenario here in a divisional game when the one team needs it for the playoffs. Sometimes that is too much pressure. But Bears got a lot of pressure after the big win. So I'll lean on Minnesota here tonight. And uh, that'll take us to our next game on the schedule. And that is going to be uh, the Eagles and the Cards. Uh, we got a couple of birds. Are they going to soar today? Is that game going over? Are the birds flying? Uh, cards minus six and a half. Eagles 49 and a half. 
a lot of points for the cards who really have not uh, done much in the past six, seven weeks. So what do you think, Antonio? Yeah, we were on them too. Uh, been actually doing pretty well. I had been fading Arizona. Then last week, saw the opportunity and really jumped on Arizona. Cash with a clean win. That was pretty much an ass-beating start to finish against the New York football giants. And then they come at this. This is a tricky spot for Arizona. You don't want to be laying a lot of points with a team that has, since their bye week, managed to get two wins, one on a Hail Mary pass, and a lot of losses where – the problem with the Arizona is their defense is not as consistent as they need to be for them to really be a playoff team this season. So the, they need to work on the defense for damn sure. And you also look at a situation, Philadelphia, got to compete. They look terrible record-wise, but they're right there in that crappy division. So they got to play it out. And their Jalen Hurts, perhaps we'll see, not counting on him to do a whole lot. I'm looking more as, as a uh, Eagles defense better than Cardinals defense right now, kind of in my opinion, more consistent. And I'm just going to take the points in what appears to be a, a phase situation. Back to back NFC least opponents. They beat the hell out of the first one. I think they'll have a tougher time when they come back home against Philadelphia today. I like the Eagles and the points. All right, looking for the Eagles to soar. Chumley, are the cards going to. Uh... Be able to cover that big number, or you believe in the same thing with Tony? I actually have pretty much the same opinion. I wrote down on my notes a lot of what Tony said, so I won't spend a whole lot going into it. But I actually bought a half a point myself, so I am uh, I'm going to take the Eagles plus seven at minus like one twenty five ish. Uh, I think I think they'll keep it close. Uh, I just think I think Hertz is actually going to help him. I mean, he's he's more mobile and he he can do a few more things, and Wentz was doing nothing and. I, th I think they'll keep it close. Possible upset, but I like the seven points I got. Yeah, I got to believe there's a potential for that money line. I love the Eagles on a teaser. I don't see Arizona blowing anybody out right now. And uh, so I don't think it's going to happen here today. Now, is Jalen Hurts actually going to have a good game? We, you know, we really don't know that much, but potentially uh, – if from what we saw, he can manage the game, keep that game close for him. All right, so uh, all right, so we're running out of time here, guys. We got a couple, uh, a few games left, but uh, what I am going to ask you to do right now is uh, let's get right into that most interesting play out of what's left. Let's see what you got. So, um, uh, Tony Gulledge, most interesting play of the day today. Let's just go to the Chiefs, man. I've been calling out in their winning streak. They've now failed to cover five consecutive spreads. That's tough to do. I was trying to figure out when the last time that's happened, that a team won straight up five consecutive times but did not cover the spread in the NFL. Look it up. It's a tough one. You, do, you don't see it every day. I think the number finally gets here. Uh, Saints questionable. Thomas gone for the year. Not sure who's starting. Don't think it would really matter. Uh, even if Breeze does come back and play, it's not going to be clicking right away, and he doesn't have Thomas. Taysom Hill, you know what you're getting from him. I think even Kansas City's defense that isn't great can find a way to slow him down, make him less effective, and Kansas City's going to be able to just to get enough points And what could be kind of a lower-scoring game here where, where the Saints try to slow it down and milk the clock. But I think at the end of the day, Kansas City's just going to keep winning, and finally they're going to cover a spread. They're going to snap that five game ATS losing streak with a win on the road at the New Orleans Saints today. All right. So what do you have uh, for uh, for our most interesting play of the day, Mr. John Lee? Well, I, I, I'm going to go. I have it written down already, so I got to – I'm doing the same thing as uh, – as Tony, uh, Mahomes plays great against uh, the better teams. Uh, people thinking that Breeze comes back, there a lot of people are probably going to want to take the three points. But today, the Chiefs, this is going to be my best bet of the day also. It's going to be Kansas City minus three. They're going to win by 10, 14 points. We'll take the Chiefs. Chiefs with okay. a big blowout over New Orleans. I believe I have a stat here from Mr. DeRosiers. Trying to see what the Saints, the last three years, have been an underdog nine times. They've covered eight out of those nine times as an underdog. So you will have to bust that trend and more or less an underdog at home. 
if that really matters these days in the NFL. So, but uh, you guys will have to buck that trend, but I will not uh, be on either side of that game. Maybe I'll play a little over for entertainment purposes on that game. And if uh, you are looking for my most interesting play of the day, uh, you know, I'm just going to lay it out to you guys. It's a nice, solid winner, and it is going to be the Tennessee Titans. I absolutely believe that uh, they will steamroll the Detroit Lions today. And I like uh, have, uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think uh, Henry's going to have any issue putting the, pound, put, the yards on the board. Now, will they do the 20 points with 200 yards? You know, that's that's a pretty thing, a pretty big thing to bet against, to, to bet with. So I still believe that uh, you should make yourself some money with the Titans, and you should also tie her into a teaser as well. All right, thank you, gentlemen, very much for joining us on a early Sunday morning with some NFL action. And I appreciate you viewers out there. Don't forget, bettercenter.com will have free picks out there today. It'll have uh, Tony Gulledge's Bookie Buster, Ross, and Chip will have some plays out there. Plenty of opportunities for you to make money here. We've got about an hour and 15 minutes left for kickoff. Stop by and make sure to uh, subscribe on YouTube or at bettercenter.com on Facebook. So uh, you can get us when we come live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is Louie Diamond. Thank you for joining us on Better Center Live.